Hi, so today I want to talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome. My name is Claire. I am your friendly, humble pharmacist. So on this channel, I talk about your medications. Subscribe if you haven't. If you're new on this channel, don't forget to click on the subscribe and remain blessed as you do so. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. So today I have a very interesting gist for you. Okay, so polycystic ovarian syndrome is simply an imbalance in your female sex hormones. Okay, now usually, let us just go back a little. Before menstruation occurs, mm, the brain is stimulated to release gonadotropin releasing hormone GnRH. When this hormone is released, it causes the pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone which helps in the maturity or in the growth of the follicle also releases luteinizing hormone which helps to uh, helps in the production of sex hormones okay so usually when one has polycystic ovarian syndrome there's an abnormal release of this gnrh when this occurs, you have less of FSH and more of LH. And the presence of insulin and LH leads to production of testosterone. Testosterone is like the male sex hormone. And this testosterone now accounts for this excessive hair growth, especially on the chest, which you experience, or and even acne amongst other hydrogenic symptoms speaking of symptoms when you have poly, when you have polycystic ovarian syndrome you may notice that you have few or no ovulation that's called anal ovulation okay so you may notice that you may notice infertility you, it's just definitely difficult getting pregnant because you're not ovulating you need to ovulate to get pregnant usually when the fsh Follicle stimulating hormone leads to the maturity of an egg. That egg is released, and that process of release of the egg is what we call ovulation. The released egg travels through the fallopian tubes to the uterus where it gets implanted and fertilized and on the likes. But if there's no um, fertilization, there's no sperm to fertilize it, you have your shedding and then your monthly um menstruation over the or bleeding back to the symptoms you may experience acne you may experience excessive hair growth on the chest on the back on the face too yes you may experience irregular periods no ovulation infertility i mentioned all this and then it can even lead to complications like having diabetes, coming down eventually with diabetes mellitus, hypertension, heart diseases, sleep apnea. Sleep, sleep apnea simply means when you're sleeping and then you, you stop breathing for some seconds and you notice that you have to shake, you shake when you start breathing because, you know, it's like... It's very, it's like you're suffocating, kind of. I don't know how to really explain it, but that's what sleep apnea. So that's actually a respiratory disorder that can result if PCOS is not picked up and managed, you know, promptly. Okay. So now, um, funnily, even when you you get to menopause, I don't know how it happens, but polycystic ovarian syndrome still disturbs. Now you know the symptoms, you know what to expect. There are some tests that can be done to ensure that this is what it is and to rule out other things. The, the, the truth of the matter is that it is best to check everything, especially if you're trying to conceive. Check everything because if they decide to induce you to ovulate, if you, you can ovulate for Africa, if you don't have a motile sperm, if you don't have a sperm to fertilize that egg, you're ovulating in vain. <laughs> You're not Virgin Mary. Sorry to mention that. But that is it is what it is. So you to checking yourself, be checking the man too so that your partner so that everything would end in praise. Mm -hmm. As for the test, they, they should check your your hormone levels as your FSH, your LH, they should even check the level of testosterone because if that is high, that is an indication, you know. 
they should check your thyroid your lipid profile your blood sugar level amongst other tests so moving on so, so there are some things that can actually mimic because the first one is um, ovarian cancer the next is ovarian insufficiency thyroid issues too can cause infertility so you have to be sure and rule out all this even when you're taking medications like danazol or medications that have androgenic side effects it may seem like you have because but all these have to be ruled out before a diagnosis can be made okay moving on to the treatment and before i move on it is important to note that polycystic ovarian syndrome increases your chance of being infertile by 10 times i don't know if that makes sense so this is something to look into once you have been diagnosed the first thing is that there is no cure but the symptoms can be managed we have lifestyle adjustments and we have medications that can be used so before i go into the medications let me quickly touch on the lifestyle adjustments the first one is that you should avoid processed foods secondly do more of protein from plant sources that's your beans your lentils do more of that that can be very helpful thirdly avoid stress emotional stress physical stress mental stress you know just try and find ways of relaxing listen to music meditate all those can be very helpful because when you're stressed up trust me they have a way of disrupting your hormones and you know affecting the brain fourthly ensure that you get enough sleep at least seven or eight hours of sleep every night i'm also talking to myself in terms of sleep because I don't know, motherhood. <laughs> Trust me, when you start having kids, mm, sleep will be thing of the past until after a fissure. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. So try to sleep. Avoid harsh chemicals and toxins from the environment that can be very detrimental, detrimental to your reproductive health. So I have talked about things to avoid. Now if you are obese or overweight you should definitely try to lose at least five percent of your body fat that increases your chance of getting pregnant you know that fat also produces its own type of estrogen so you try and lose that weight and you would see the benefits okay now as for exercise try to you know do moderate exercise don't do it excessively Moderate exercise. Exercise basically helps your body to use up glucose. You know, it increases your body's sensitivity to glucose. And especially all these body weight exercises like your push-ups, all those can be very beneficial. Okay? Now, as for the treatment, hmm, I'll start with bed control pills. Basically, your birth control pills would help to regulate your estrogen and your progestin levels and also decrease your testosterone level, thereby redu reducing all those, um, um, all those symptoms due to excessive production of testosterone. Okay, but when you're taking your birth control pills, you may experience mood swings, nausea, vomiting, headache, you know, all these side effects are in line with the medication you're taking if you're not trying to get pregnant you just want to regulate your your cycle birth control pills can be an option for you the second one we have are anti-androgenic medications like your spinolactone your finasteride and a host of others but as for spinolactone when you're taking um, when you're taking these medications ensure that you use contraception so that you don't get pregnant because they have teratogenic effect what i mean by that is that they would affect the baby the fetus they have a way of affecting the fetus when you take them while you're pregnant so when you're using these anti-androgenic medications ensure that you are on a contraceptive pill or method okay now uh, moving on to the next thing 
The next class of drugs we have are the biguanides. We have the biguanides. That's where your metformin comes in. Metformin is used for diabetes and is also used for insulin resistance. Metformin, metformin basically acts by increasing your sensitivity, your body's sensitivity to glucose. And it also has some anti-androgenic effects. You get to, as it has anti-androgenic effects, reducing those um androgenic hormones okay so metformin when you're taking metformin you may experience metallic taste you may change you may experience lactic acidosis that's plenty of grammar but that's what's not <laughs> okay you may experience hypoglycemia and other side effects if you want to know more, let me know in the comment section and I'll just do a whole video on metformin or birth control pill as I have done for Clomid. So speaking of Clomid, if you're trying to get pregnant and you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, there are some medications, there are some fertility medications that help to induce ovulation. But like I said, if you're inducing ovulation and there is no sperm, you are trying in vain. I'm sorry to say, but that it is what it is. So make sure you also check in your partner to be sure that he has enough sperm to fertilize that egg that you are trying to induce okay so um clomid i have talked about clomid you can check out that video clomid is a selective estrogen receptor modulator it helps to induce ovulation but your best bet is your letrozole because your letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor what i mean by that it's that is that it it inhibits the conversion or formation of estrogen mm? and when this happens this makes your brain feel like you don't have enough follicle stimulating hormone and thereby bringing about the release of this hormone and eventually you know you know the process i've already explained it in the, so that's why i said don't skip any parts if you watch from the very beginning you understand what i'm trying to say here so when this hormone is released in the whole cycle process and all that. But when you're taking this medication, you may experience side effects like excessive sweating, headache, hot flushes, and a whole lot of others. So I'll talk about this these medications fully in my next video. Wow. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is not a death sentence. You can have your own baby naturally. As for the acne, you can use topical agents for treating the acne that is due to polycystic ovarian syndrome the first one you can use benzoyl peroxide you can use tretinoin of late i've been using tretinoin and it's been so wonderful it gives me this glow when i'm done washing my face you just notice this glow on my face <laughs> tretinoin is and i've been mentioning one or two things about how to use tretinoin you can check that out on the channel Okay, you can also use clindamycin cream, erythromycin cream, amongst other topical agents if you have acne due to polycystic ovarian syndrome. Wow, I hope you have picked one or two things from this video. Let me know what you have learned from this video in the comment section. And please smash that like button. Give this video a massive like. <laughs> Trust me, this was an amazing video and I am happy you watched to this very point. And if you watched to this very point, let me know in the comment section. The hormone that is increased when you have PCOS. And also let me know one medication that you, I mentioned in the course of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I would see you in my next video. Remain blessed. Bye.